We've looked at electrostatics and then at electrical circuits with currents in them. Now we're going to turn our attention to magnetism, which is intimately related with electricity, but it is a distinct phenomenon. So let's get to it. As you probably know, if you had a decent childhood and played with magnets, if you bring magnets close together, they will either repel or attract each other, depending on which ends of the magnets are facing each other. We call one end a north end and the other end a south end. Like ends <coughs> repel and opposite ends attract, similar to what we saw with electrical charges that positives repel or negatives repel, but opposites, that's not a negative sign, uh, opposites attract. Okay, now the similarities kind of end there because when we started out talking about electric forces, we talked about charge as being the fundamental unit from which electric fields and electric forces arise. Now, if you have a magnet, and if you've got, say, a long bar magnet, and you want to chop it up to get the fundamental unit of magnetic charge, so you cut this guy in half, and you might think, oh, well, I'm going to end up with this entire half is going to be a north magnet, and that entire half is going to be a south magnet. Well, unfortunately, no, you just end up with another south end and another north end. And maybe you think, oh, I just got to cut it smaller. So you cut it in half again, cut it in half again. And every time you do that, it's like uh, Fantasia. You know, you're cutting up the broomstick and it just keeps getting more broomsticks. You just keep creating more and more magnets. And we have never succeeded in cutting a magnet to the point where there's just a north or just a south. That would be called a magnetic monopole as opposed to this is a dipole as two poles or two ends. Uh, lots of theories, quantum theory included, predict that there should be magnetic monopoles and there would be some interesting implications if we could find one, but to date there have been none. There have been some kind of synthetic composite materials, but no pure kind of fundamental uh, particle that is a magnetic monopole. So that makes things a little trickier. We can't just uh, quantize our charge like we did with uh, electric forces. We can't quantize our magnetic charge. But we can still look at field lines and again probably some of you have played with things like this. If you have some iron filings and you put them near a magnet they will line up in very distinct patterns and these are the same patterns you would get if you put a compass around that magnet. So we say that these um, these iron filings trace out the field lines, the lines of force um, that another magnetic material will feel in, in the proximity of that magnet. So we tend to draw them as loops. Now because we don't have monopoles, there's always a south end near a north end, so you always get closed loops with your magnetic field lines. So these ones are kind of going off the page here, but they would eventually come back and so forth. Um, so there are our field lines. By convention, we always have field lines point away from north and towards south, just like we had with electric fields pointing away from positive and toward negative. It's just a convention so we can keep track of what is what. And <clears throat> we're not going to get into the details of the magnetic field of the Earth necessarily, but uh, it so happens that it's tilted from our axis a bit, and since compasses, the north end of a compass needle points to the North Pole. The North Pole is actually magnetic south. So, good little tidbit in case you're ever on Jeopardy or something, you know, never know. Okay, as I mentioned, we soon realized that electricity is very closely related to magnetic fields, and about the first phenomenon we noticed was that a compass would be deflected near a wire if that wire was carrying current. If there's no current, nothing happens. But if there's current flowing through here, you get the compass needle deflecting. Well, that means that the wire has to be producing a magnetic field because the compass needle reacts to magnetic fields. And if you kind of look at the pattern you get here, they soon realize that it forms these closed loops around the wire and we have the first of one of our many 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 right hand rules that we will see to figure out in which direction the magnetic field around a current carrying wire is going so if you point your thumb here in the direction of the current in this case up then your fingers will curl around in the direction of the magnetic field if we have a current going the other way your thumb would be down your fingers would curl the other way 
and you would get magnetic field lines going in the opposite direction. Now if we take this wire and we bend it into a loop and think about what is going to happen with the magnetic field lines in that case, that's actually one way to create a very powerful magnet. These are called electromagnets because they're created by electrical currents. If you follow that same right hand rule where you point your thumb in the direction of the current, then your fingers are going to curl in uh, to the right in this case whenever your fingers on the inside of the loop. If you kind of wrap your fingers all the way around on the outside of the loop, they're going to be pointing to the left. So all of these uh, inside currents are going to point that way. And then we have another kind of shortcut if we adjust this right hand rule where if you take your fingers and point them in the direction of current flow now so you wrap your fingers around this way and then your thumb will indicate the direction of the magnetic field from that loop I don't know if that's any better than doing this but some people like it and this magnetic field similar to with the electric field lines the more dense the more closely spaced the magnetic field lines are the stronger the magnetic field so when you have a loop like this the magnetic field out here is pretty negligible and the magnetic field in here is tends to be much stronger so if we want to know the direction of the magnetic field created by a loop we would curl our fingers around our thumb would tell us oh that creates a strong magnetic field in that direction now if we get a let me jump back real quick here if we get a magnetic field from a wire, or you could say that a wire is exerting a force on a compass, which is a magnet, so a current creates a force on a compass, on a, on a magnet, you might think that the opposite could happen too, that a magnet can exert a force on a wire, and indeed that does happen. If you have a magnet that looks like this, you have a north and south end near each other, you can get a relatively uniform magnetic field, at least far from the edges here, uh, and that's good enough for us physicists, right? We ignore all the fringing that makes things complicated. So if we're in a uniform magnetic field and we have a wire with a current running through it, then that wire does indeed feel a force. And here's the equation for calculating that force. We say that it's IL cross B, where I is the magnitude of the current in the wire, L is a vector for the segment, the length of wire that is in the magnetic field, so it would be like this segment there, that would be L, and we give that a vector quantity in the direction of the current, just because we don't like to make current a vector, even though current can go one way or the other and that matters, but that's how we do it by convention. And then B is the symbol we use for magnetic field. So we have E fields and we have B fields now. Why they use a B, I don't know. Ask a historian or something. All right, so there is our equation. It is a cross product, and if you remember with all cross products, that gives you a vector that is perpendicular to both of the vectors you're crossing. And once again, a right-hand rule will tell you the direction of the product vector. So let's take this top case up here. You would point your fingers in the direction of the current, so out to that way, kind of into your screen then you would rotate your palm so that it's facing in the direction of the magnetic field so you kind of twist your hand around so that your palm is facing to the right so if your fingers are into the screen palm to the right then your thumb will indicate the direction of the force now you can use other conventions with pointer finger and middle finger and all of these other things but anyway do whatever works for you that will tell you that the force that this wire is going to feel in that magnetic field is going to be straight down in this case the current is going the other way and as you would expect have your fingers kind of pointing toward you point your palm to the right still your thumb would now be pointing up so the wire will feel a force in the other direction as far as actually doing the calculation cross products can also be written as uh, the two the magnitudes times the sine of the angle between the two vectors so this is probably what you're going to be using most what this tells us as well is that you get the biggest force when the current is perpendicular to the magnetic field. If they're parallel, then this force goes to zero. Looking at units real quick, the SI unit for a magnetic field, the strength of a mag magnetic field, is known as a Tesla. Even though our good friend Elon Musk likes to pronounce it with a Z, Tesla, this is named after the scientist Nikola Tesla, and his name was pronounced with an S. Anyway, you use a T, capital T, for the symbol, and 
if you look at F equals ILB, and just kind of ignoring the sine theta because it doesn't really matter here, that means that B is equal to F over IL, and the units of force are newtons, units of I are amps, units of L are meters, so one Tesla is equal to a newton per amp meter. Another unit that we'll use occasionally, not too much, is known as the Gauss. Um, one, a one Tesla magnetic field is quite strong, so uh, a lot of applications it's easier to use this smaller unit, a Gauss, that is 10 to the negative fourth Teslas. All right, welcome to magnetism.